Hi peeps, my name is Zena and I'm aging ethically. The, the state of, of the world and the state of uh, our nation as a whole right now has been very unsettling. Um, a lot of us haven't been getting much sleep and if you're paying attention, it's um, heartbreaking to see what is going on. There's a pandemic, people are sick, people are dying, people have been in their homes self-quarantining, people have lost their jobs, there are like millions of people are unemployed. And now we have all globally watched the execution of George Floyd. The entire world is outraged by what they have seen. There are protests going on all over the world, um, some peaceful, some not so peaceful. And I don't want to get into politics on this channel because this channel is for everybody. But I think you may be able to figure out what my political stance is by the end of this video. Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, these are the most current names that we are speaking. Violence against the African-American community is nothing new. And I don't have to say that to you guys, especially if you're from my generation. We've been watching this kind of thing for a long time. What's different now is that everyone has cell phones and they're filming it. People are stopping, noticing, filming, and sharing. Watching all of this stuff happen and watching the protesters just reminds me uh, when I was younger and I witnessed something when I was in college in New Jersey that changed my life dramatically. I was 18 years old. I was in college. I was living away from home for the first time and I was living off campus. I lived in a particular part of that college town which was very kind of active at night. I had a porch. So I used to sit and watch people, people watch at night sometimes, and that was something that I did. There was a street right next to my apartment where there was, um, uh, I guess, illegal parking. Like it, it even, it was posted. Like if you park there, you know, you, you will be towed. And I myself, parked there a few times uh it was very tempting because it's in a city and it's hard to find parking and, and a lot of people use that spot quite often actually at 18 years old 19 years old i've never witnessed uh, police brutality i've never really witnessed arguments or, or fights you know life was like a 10 lane highway you know and and anything is possible you know, it was still, it was still kind of like puppies and kittens for me. Uh, but my vision, my, my view on human rights and the way people are treated and how people are not treated equally forever changed when I lived in that apartment. I was sitting outside doing my little people watching in the dark, no one could see me. I noticed a police car sitting with its lights off behind someone who had parked in that towaway parking spot and they were just sitting in there. And I figured maybe they were on a break. There was a sort of stigma attached to law enforcement in that area as being um, somewhat aggressive. And I had never seen it, although I had heard about it. I saw two young African-American men approach the illegally parked vehicle. And at that point, the police officers jumped out of their car, ran up to them and started screaming a barrage of insults and demands. What I heard would have, if I were receiving that, would have made me pee my pants. Like it was terrifying. And I'm just sitting there watching on the porch in the dark. And these police officers, were just screaming at these young men. Get the F down. What the F are you doing? Where are you coming from? Where are you going? Get down, get down, get down. And these young men were like, yes, sir. No, sir. Getting their credentials, getting their paperwork, license registration or whatever they had and complying while they were sitting, complying. 
And the whole time they were sitting there, these cops were screaming at them like they were subhuman. I'd never seen anything like that before. I was terrified. I was shaken. I didn't know what to do. We didn't have cell phones back then. It's not like, I didn't know what, so I just kept watching, you know? It never got violent, but it was verbally aggressive, verbally abusive and mentally abusive. And I watched it with my eyes. And I thought to myself, what do I do if it escalates? I can't call the cops, they're here. Or do you call other cops? I don't know, my 18 year old brain just was frozen. Eventually, a tow truck came and took the young men's car away and the cops left and now these two young men were just like left to their devices in the street with no vehicle on the corner of that intersection was a Krausers and a Krausers is like a 7-eleven or a quick stop or just like a convenience store you know and <clears throat> there were pay phones because like I said this is pre-dating cell phone they called somebody and I went inside of my apartment and like decompressed for a minute uh, because at that time I knew that they were safe and they were calling someone. I went back outside because I saw headlights and someone came in and picked them up. Friend, family member, somebody came. And then I went back into my apartment and I laid in my bed and I stared at the ceiling in shock, processing and unpacking what the hell I just watched. And from that point on, and in fact, that summer too is when I decided to go vegetarian. So that was when I was really coming into like a pacifist sort of lifestyle. And, you know, I didn't know anything about politics or human rights or, or uh, injustices or social injustices or, you know, animal liberation. Like, I, you know, I was really just, everything was just starting to come together for me at that point. But that's what I saw. And I will never forget it. It changed me as a person. And I've told this story to, you know, my closest friends and stuff. But now, you know, that I have this channel, I figured it would be um, a great way to share some stories. And it's just crazy as, you know, life is unfolding and things are happening. And I just can't stop thinking about those two young men. I'm so disappointed that I feel like I failed them because I didn't like yell anything to the cops. And I was frozen. And I feel like, um, sort of like a failure for that lack of action. I was a witness. And then from that point, I became an ally and a, a pretty outspoken one. What's changed now is that we have technology. There are cameras everywhere. There are cameras in parking lots. There are cameras on police officers. They're supposed to have them on. There are cameras in everyone's hand. Everyone has a cell phone. We are constantly recording things. and. And sadly for George Floyd had, I think it was a young lady, had she not recorded that execution, we probably wouldn't be talking about it. So people are rioting. There are lots of peaceful protests. There are some angry protests. There is some property damage. And I'm not gonna sit here and judge people for their reactions to witnessing a murder. It's not my place to do that. It's not my business to do that. All I can do is be peaceful. And, you know, Martin Luther King preached peaceful protest and he was murdered. So who am I to sit there and say, you have to, you have to respond peacefully. You have to protest this certain way, not that way, maybe not kneeling down, you know, at, at a sports game because, you know, that may be misconstrued as disrespectful to the flag and to soldiers who, by the way, are putting their lives on the line around the world for our freedom to protest. I don't like violence. I don't like seeing people get hurt. I don't like seeing people's businesses destroyed. I don't like that. You know, African Americans built this country for free. And yes, I'm talking about slavery. They built this country. And to feel like you want to tear it down, I, I get it. You know, I understand that. I understand the rage. 
I can just say what I would do. And what I would do is to protest peacefully, but I'll never judge anyone for the way they're reacting. Imagine that, imagine if, you know, imagine if someone murdered someone in your family and people are telling you how you have to react to that. It's devastating. I'll never be spoken to the way those two young men were spoken to for parking. I may get my car towed, <laughs> but I would not have been berated like that and talked to like I'm subhuman. If that happened to me one time, one time, it would affect me for the rest of my life. Those young men probably have received that many, many more times in their lifetime. If you see something, say something. That's how we change what's happening right now there are several ways that we could change and I'm about to go through those because I feel like I have to. If you're at work or you're at school and you hear people saying racist things, tell them it's not okay. Speak up. If you see an injustice, if you see something horrific, film it. Stay safe. Protect yourself, protect your family, but film it and share it. If you see something, say something. Sign petitions. I'm going to include some resources down below so that we can actually create some change in this country, regardless of who's president, regardless of who the lawmakers are. We, the people, can make a difference, and this is how. We need to change legislation, and that is one powerful thing that will come out of all of these protests. We hope that this will bring new laws and new legislation that will, mm, I don't know, maybe change the way people are treated. We need to vote. You need to register and vote. Four years ago, people stayed home and they didn't vote. I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but my goodness, please vote. Every vote counts. And <laughs> jury duty, guys, jury duty is probably the most single, powerful, most powerful way you can change laws in this country. These verdicts change laws. These verdicts create laws. Go to jury duty because I'm excited when I get that little notification that I have jury duty coming up because I know that I'm going to be part of the system that actually creates change. Please do, please do support African-American owned businesses. Again, I'm going to create, I'm going to put some links down below. Of course, it's important to be uh, vegan food and vegan cosmetics. I'm gonna put those links down below. I'm also going to include a link down below for resources where you can sign petitions or where you can donate money, where you can make a change. We need to lift African-American communities and we need to put funding into these communities to improve them, to improve quality of life, to improve prosperity. because black lives matter. Now, I am a very vocal animal rights activist. I like to focus a lot of time on the animals because they are voiceless. It's my lifestyle. It's within my vegan lifestyle to be in animal rights. I, I, my ultimate goal is animal liberation. However, my brain is capable of multitasking compassion and empathy. You're walking in an entire in group encompassing sentient life and someone from that group is pulled out and violently mistreated, you run to the aid of that being and you focus your mind, you focus your voice, you focus your strength on helping that being survive. That being is Black Lives Matter. Please stay safe out there, guys. Be kind to your hearts, be kind to each other. If you're protesting, be careful, be safe. Let us please move forward with compassion in our hearts and let us please strive for change in every way that we can. Right now, it's up to us to make a difference. Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd. You will not be forgotten. We will change. I believe that in my heart and I believe 
that we will achieve normality at some point. Not go back to what we had, but start anew with peaceful compassion and empathy. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. Be safe and be healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.